Hi, this is Rachel Mills with Making Create Arts and um, Meal Craft. Today we're going to be starting um, a project. So today we'll be crocheting, but this is going to become um, can become a bit of a lengthier project. So today we're going to be making basically a little nest. If you see this, these are for um, sort of like wild animals and things in like um, rescue facilities. We have started a plan to try to make a bunch together as our group and everything so that we can house these little animals and things. So there they are. So that's what the crochet nest looks like. It'll help um, like little rescue at, like birds and critters and rabbits and who knows what else. But we're planning to donate them to some sort of rescue facility. So here is another wee crochet nest. I kind of got a more colourful, like two-tone one. This one is a knitted one, so it's a little bit different, but still the same idea. It still sits up, it's still a little nest. And this is a different style, where the little critter, I think it's more for like little fluffy critters, less birds. And you can actually like, go inside there and be all warm and cosy. And I've got a big one over here that you can't really see terribly well. But yes, so these two are both crocheted. We can tell because you can look at the sort of texture there, the sort of crochet stitch. They're all single crochets as well. So you won't need to learn anything really new to make our little nest. That's what we're gonna to make today. We make little crochet nests. We can make um, knitted nests um, very easily as well. I might even just give you instructions to make it. So our crocheted nest, here we are. We start with, we're going to start with a slip knot, but we're not going to pull it all the way taut like I just did. So we don't pull it there, it's loose. We can also, let's, let me try to do it on the ground for you so you can see that. Pull it over. There we go, but I'm not pulling it completely taut yet. See, I haven't pulled it fully. So now I can have this. Put my hook through. Make sure I'm not crocheting with the tail, of course. And I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to put my needle in that loop and crochet one. I'm gonna end up crocheting six, actually. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go five. So now I have this tail and I get to pull that nice and tightly. So that's going to be nice and together. So now at this point, I'm going to crochet twice in there in the same loop. Remember last week how we talked about doing circles? This circle is going to be a little bit different. So we go twice in there and then once in this one in this stitch there, and then twice in the next stitch. And once in the next stitch. Twice. Did I do once in the last stitch? Let me have a good proper look at that. Yeah, once in there, okay. So now you have to check and really have a good proper look. And for me, it was a little bit difficult to see that there. So it's two in there, one in there, um, two in here, one in there, two in there, one in there. Now, the great thing about this pattern is it is so, so simple. A lot of time is crocheting in the round. You'll want to re remember where you started your round, right? So we'd want to remember, um, I'm actually not sure exactly where I started my round, probably around here-ish actually, but I would want to put um, 
some sort of like safety pin or stitch marker in it to remind myself where I started and that'll help me. But I don't need to do this in that pattern, in this pattern. It's a little bit simpler. So I'm just going to continue doing one in one stitch and then two in the next stitch and then one in the next stitch and two in the next stitch. One in one stitch, two in the next stitch, one in one stitch, two in the next stitch. And I'm just going to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that until my like little circle here is about three, three and a half inches um, just dia in diameter. That's why I did the, this when it was about three or five inches in diameter like that. That's when I stopped doing that. And then at that point, I'm just going to go one stitch in every stitch around, if that makes sense. Instead of doing two stitches when you need to, just one stitch and to stop doing that increase. And then, then I'm going to do that till it's about, I think they said about three inches tall. So you might want to have um, some sort of ruler or measuring tape. Let's see. But yeah, about two inches tall, actually, like two and a half, let's say. Two and a half is a wee bit better. Let's go for two and a half. Or if you don't um, really go by inches, it would be more seven centimetres. I should actually have a millimetre thing. I think it's because this ruler is um, North American. Anyways. But you can always go online to check that sort of thing to, um, yes, to convert it for you. But yes, so that's how you make the crochet nest. So now for the knitting nest, um, it's kind of doing it the opposite way. Instead of starting at the bottom, we start at the top. So I'm going to grab up my knitting supplies and show you how you would start that. Alrighty, so we're back with some knitting. So because I don't think any of you guys would really have double pointed needles at home, I'm going to be showing you how to do this on just the normal straight needles. Otherwise, I'd be showing you how to do double pointed. One thing I don't think I mentioned in the crochet section was how I've put the yarn together like this to keep it nice and thick. Because it's very, very important for these nests to be really thick so they can hold their shape and keep animals warm, right? So we're going to try to keep it as thick as possible. So now my needles actually are a little bit big for this kind of thickness. So if I'm going to be really serious, I should actually like thicken it still. And you know what I can do? I'm going to make a little slip knot there. Pull it through really, really long. And basically make a big chain with my hands. If you can see how I do that actually. Let me see. Let me try to... Make it a little bit smaller than I normally would, maybe, for you. Let's see, so I've got my big, huge slip knot here, right? And then I can pull that through. I'm not going to pull it tight at all. I'm going to keep pulling the yarn through. Oop, I seem to have lost my white yarn, actually. But yes, I would then pull it through and then pull it through again and then pull it through again and keep doing that. And then I can knit with this. And that would be really nice and thick. So that's another trick for you if you don't have thick enough yarn. Let me just, there we go. I think I'm just going to use the one colour actually. And I'm just going to make it nice and thick like that. I'm basically hand crocheting to make my yarn nice and thick. If you can see how I'm doing that, I'm just have the loop, grabbing the yarn through it. Oop. You can try to run away on me. The loop, grabbing my yarn through it, and then I, I would actually go even further and bring it out really, really far. And then I can make a slip knot with this. I really do that for like really big needles. Like these needles are quite big, so I'm going to do that. It's just the one color. So, oop, I'm not doing the. So now we're going to cast on 54 stitches. So I'm going to do my crochet technique a lot. 
Oh, my yarn's just falling apart today. I think it's the place I keep them. There's a sharp edge there. But yes, you get the idea. I think I'm just going to have to use a thinner yarn just to demonstrate for you. Once we've cast on 54 stitches, I don't think I will cast on 54 stitches, just because I want to demonstrate the technique for you and how we're making it for you. I don't think I'm actually going to be making a nest this time. So I'm just casting on long tail cast on method, casting on 54. So if you have some sort of darning needle, I don't have my darning needle in the other room. Maybe you can get a picture of my um, darning needle on the screen. But they're these sort of big um, needles that you can get yarn through the eye of, right? The eye is that hole in the needle. Anyways, they're the big needles you can get yarn through. And they're blunt, completely blunt, so they won't poke you or hurt you. And they are really useful for sewing things up. So when we're working straight, for this sort of situation, or because it's knitted, this sort of situation, we would want to sew it up so that it's all together like this, because we would be doing it basically if it was split in half, right? So we're going to sew that up at some point. So that's why we have a darning needle. So we will need a darning needle. So now, let's see. Now that you have, um, like, let's say, like 50, you're 54. And you're probably going to be using two or three strands of yarn, right? Not like I'm doing right now. Um, you are going... Let's see. You're going to knit for approximately three inches. So you're just going to knit like normal. So if you know how to purl, you can alternate your rows and go knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row if you'd like. Or if you haven't figured out how to purl yet, that's fine. Just knit like normal and you'll get the sort of bumpy stitch texture. And once you've knitted for about three inches doing that, we'll then come to the point where we will need to start um, decreasing. And we're decreasing because we've knitted this section. So now we need to knit the sort of full section. This would also work for a hat. I think you might need to adjust your needles and adjust, um, not your needles, but adjust how many stitches you have on. But, and adjust how long you went, of course. But yes, it could definitely work for a hat. I would really love to see some experimentation. I think um, it'd be a great idea if we could have the, if you could have like a link to the patterns that I'm using. If we could have a link to the patterns that I'm using in the like description box or something, or just somewhere, somewhere hidden, somewhere anywhere, I'm not sure, but just some sort of link to those patterns, that'll be really great, because that way you can try even just to follow those patterns without my help. The knitting one, of course, it's instructing you to use DPNs, which mean double pointed needles. So when you see the DPN part and how it's telling you to split your, um, Let's see what it says. It says divide um, stitches onto 18 stitches per slash needle. So it's meaning like put 18 stitches on your needles and your deep in, on your double pointed needles. The way double pointed needles work is um, for another day, I think. I was about to explain that. <laughs> but yes, for another day. So let's say that you've now knitted um, about three inches of this over um, 54, was it? Yes, 54 stitches. So now you come to the part in the pattern where it says to knit seven and then knit two together. So now you're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now you're going to knit two together. So we've gone over that before. You're going to this one, the second stitch there. Going through like normal, you can see there, right? I'm going through it completely over here. I'll move it all around so you can see that. Up over out like normal. So you've knit two together. And then it's set, there's this little star. There's little stars kind of covering them. It says repeat to end. So now we knit seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven. And now you're going to knit two together. That was really useful for me. I just, wow. But anyways, I need to keep going because I only have a small wee swatch here. You have the full um, 54 needle stitches. So you're going to keep doing that. So now it says next row. It says knit six. So now one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six. And then knit two together. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And knit two together again. Because again, we're repeating that till end, right? So now that's done. And now it says next row. You should try to keep on track what row you're on. You might want to have a wee scrap piece of paper to write down where you are, especially if you're going to put your knitting down for a second and go we'll leave. Very important to remember where you are so you don't get too lost. You don't have to like rip out a bunch of your knitting to sort of get to somewhere where you remember. So now we're at five, aren't we? So one, two, three, four, five. And now we're, whoop, we're knitting two together. See how I brought mine to the front? Don't do that. Can we? Yes, <laughs> don't do that. That was for purling, unless you are purling. So there we go, we've knit two together and now we have to knit five again. One, two, three, four, five, and knit two together. So we're just gonna keep in that sort of pattern until we get down till we're knitting one and we're knitting two together. So now the next row we knit four, we knit three. So now we, the next row we, hit, hit, we knit four, knit two together. Knit, uh, row after that, we knit three, we knit two together. Row after that, we knit two, we knit three together. We, we knit two, we knit two together. It's just knit, knit two normal, norm, like normal. And then we knit two together. And then we knit one and we knit two together. And then after that, um, we will be, we're going to clip off our yarn. They say to leave about six inches or something. So we'll break the yarn, clip that off, right? And then using uh, your, your, my yarn needle, uh, we're going to, yep. So now with the yarn needle, we can just, or even with your hand, if your yarn is clipped, pretend mine is clipped, right? That this isn't a little bump here, but the end of it. Although a lot of times, even if I have the end there, I'll fold it over so that it's just a little bit easier to get through all my knit all my loops. So then I just pull whatever's left once I've knitted all the way to knit one, knit two together, I've completed that, right? Because remember, this is a swatch. This is an explanation. And then I knit through. Right now, and I'm not knitting through, I'm knitting through, I'm pulling through. Just pulling all these little stitches off your needle onto the string and just completing that. And then once I've got them all off, let's pretend I've got them all off, I'll just throw them off because it is a wee swatch, right? I can pull that nice and tight and taut, right? And I'll have this lovely little, like with this situation, where I've got this lovely little bottom bit, right? This lovely little bottom. And I will pull that nice and tight and then pull the string through to the kind of underside, of course. And I can kind of tie it off from there. And then the edge that I'll have, right? Oop, this is getting a little messy here. But yes, the edge that I have, I can pull that together and sew it up so that it makes a proper wee nest. There we are. It's a little bit of a more messy explanation, but it takes a lot to knit a whole nest in one video. Alrighty, I'm really looking forward to seeing all your nests um, and it'll be amazing to be able to help out all the wee baby birds and baby bunnies and whatever other little critters whether they be slimy or a little gross or cute and fluffy. <laughs> but yes, I uh, look forward to seeing all those. I uh, will see you soon. And yes, I'll see you next week. Bye bye.